This video is sponsored by Domestica. Today I will show you how I created this really cool photo manipulation that I named the Guardian of the Forest. It was a lot of work here, so let me show you how I did it. For this photo manipulation, I got the idea from the movie that I watched 10 years ago. It was called The Legend of the Guardians, where there are a bunch of owls fighting with other owls. Don't hurt me! I will hurt you. Don't hurt me! And there is another owl that is totally uninteresting about a fight at all, and she will go out of the frame. So after the initial idea, I went into Photoshop to create a simple sketch. This is a professional drawing, as you can see, I had a master of drawing. So I created the oval with the shield and the axe and some environment. And then after the main thing, I went online for the most tedious and boring process ever to find a proper owl for this. So I downloaded several of these owls on several websites to see which one fits the best. And at the end, I choose this one. Then I jump straight into Photoshop to extract the owl out of the background using the object selection tool and uh, manually refine the address with the brush, I like that way. And after that, again, boring and tedious process to find a proper background. And that can take a while, just trials and errors. Now what you're looking here is me doing everything for the first time straight out of my head from that sketch, so you're seeing everything behind the scene. I found this old tree and I thought it would be a really cool branch for the oval to sit on, so I extract it out to the background and just put it under the oval so to get something like this. So after again refining some edges here and there, deleting some parts, I went for another photo of the knight and just extracted the armor, used the shield and put everything here together, use a different shield because obviously first one I didn't like it, I like this one better and with the transform tool, warp tool, I warped this armor a little bit to fit the oval a little better, also remove some parts of the oval, use another piece of the armor over the top of that just to add some details on that, put it into multiply blending mode and uh, here you have it. But at the end, hmm, I'm not so happy with this, I didn't like this idea so I trashed everything and start all over again. So that means, again, all the boring and tedious process, finding another oval that is more suitable for this photo manipulation that I had in mind. So after searching for a little bit longer, I finally found this oval that I thought it would be a better fit for my idea. So again, extract it out of the background, use the same technique, same armor, put it over the top of the oval, transform it, warp it, and uh, try to nudge it to be really nice fit to the owl. I use another armor here and extracted just the lower part of it. As you can see, just to merge those two pieces together to create one really cool piece of armor for the owl. And I start to like it here. So I deleted the parts of the owl that I didn't want to be visible and also parts of the armor here, as you can see. And this whole process of me making this photo manipulation took around five hours. So this is why I didn't do a step-by-step -step tutorial. It would be a crazy long video for YouTube, but here you're seeing this breakdown. So after I deleted some parts of the owl that I didn't like and uh, actually that there, they will not be visible because I put this shield obviously across the left part of the oval, I play with the armor a little bit again transform it here and there and added a few different parts copying the existing parts. You can see here this is the shoulder part of the shield that I play with it. I really like it like that and made like the little bit arm there. But then I found another owl because I want to change the face, the hat. So this looks a little bit more mean and more serious than the previous one. So this is what I did. I changed it. But before we continue, let me introduce to today's sponsor, Domestica. Domestica is currently the fastest growing online creative community that produces high quality courses in the house with the top professional artists around the world helping students to develop their creative abilities. Amazing thing is that they have courses for all levels, both for beginners and professionals. They have courses for a variety of topics like graphic design, 2D and 3D design, web and app development and much more. They also have plenty of great courses in marketing, photography, creative writing and so on and so forth. But what is probably the most interesting for you guys is that they have a lot of great Photoshop and photo manipulation courses. 
Another really cool thing is that there is no membership fee. Rather, you're paying just per course you choose and you can watch it in your own pace wherever you want. Also, the price is pretty accessible and currently this week is Cyber Monday discount. So most of the courses are just $9.99. And also, if you use my discount code, you will get additional 10% of the price. Also, each course contains a certificate that you can download and include in your portfolio. So if you want to check out See the links down there in the description, use my discount code and enjoy any course you choose by Domestica. Right now, let's go back to the video. Then I searched for the grass element that I want to put under the oval. So I found two really cool pieces. This is one that it will be a middle plan where the oval is actually standing. And this is another one that is front plan that is a little bit blurred because it's out of the focus, closer to the camera. And I use liquify tool to transform it a little bit. Then I decided to damage the shield because it's too perfect. So I just cut a few parts, erase it actually, and then use brush tool and manually paint the colors here and add that dab that would be visible if the shield was broken like that. So it's really cool addition. I really like it. Then I use another shield with the arrows, extracted those arrows using pen tool, extracted just one and just copied and place it here. Also draw some lines under the arrows to represent the cracks on the shields from the arrow and then try to refine the oval a little bit and of course to add that another part of the armor to add even more details to the current armor so i did two things use the upper part and use it just for the neck part here to make really cool uh, upper part of the armor and then copy it put it into multiply blending mode and just place it over the top of the current armor so to add even more details there then I added even more grass elements to populate the scene, but before that I clean up the layer palette on the right, adding different colors to different grooves because in this moment of time I have so many layers and I want easily to access them to see what is what. Now here you're seeing me just populating the grass as the front elements, they will be darker later. Uh, they're out of the focus obviously and that bush over there it's there currently, but eventually I removed it because I didn't like it. Now the idea is to put the oval to stand on something, something firm. So I use this uh, log, this part of the of the trunk actually, and refine the oval a little bit more. And after that, it's the time to add some shadows, to paint the light. I decided that the light should come from the left side of the scene. so. Now I will leave you watching me just light painting. I have a full tutorial on how to paint light and you can check it on the link here in the upper corner. Before I start painting the light on the leg part of the oval, I just decided to add some kind of uh, hair here on the legs to make it not so straight cut it out and for that I just use the Photoshop default grass brush and it worked perfectly as you can see. Here I made a mistake, I added the shadow from the arrows on the shield on totally opposite side, but fortunately I realized that later and I corrected. Okay, so now there was a part when I uh, should decide what kind of weapon should I put on the owl's uh, other hand. So I want the axe, but then I search online for different axes and this one is it was really cool. So here I just refined a few things and made actually the fingers from that part of the arm. I copied several times, used the uh, Puppet Warp tool to just the shape, the fingers as you can see and just copy several times to make like at least three fingers here. And voila, we have the owl holding the axe. And then I continue with the light painting so to match the lights and shadows from the whole scene. So now let's continue watching this.
And then this was the part where I said, wait, what? Oh, the shadows from the arrows are completely wrong, so let's paint them again. And I did them again, fortunately, because that would be really, really sad to leave them like that. And here I decided to add some light rays from the left side of the scene, so I just made some lines, blurred them, lowered the opacity and masked out a few parts that I didn't like to be visible. Then I removed that bush and added a tree instead, because I wanted to have something there in the front plan, so I made it darker, blur it and also paint some light on it. And finally then I added the target instead of that bush, because it has more sense, it's complementing the scene, and I really like it, it's pretty cool, pretty cool. Also, I blurred it, paint the light and match it the scene even better. And then I decided there is something missing here, so what is that? These grass elements in the front? Well, yes, but no, I miss the owl's best friend and that's a mouse. So, not this duck, not this duck, the mouse, yeah, this one. So, I extracted him out of the background, put it there like he's doing whatever he's doing, it's hiding or it's, I don't know, whatever you think he's doing, is doing and then paint the light on it and match it to the background even more. So after all these tweakings, I finally merged everything into one layer, went to camera to do a final color grading, some tweakings here and there, and this is our final result. Right guys, you just saw the final result, I really hope that you like it. Please let me know down there in the comment section what you think about it. And also, if you like this episode, if you got inspired from this one, if you pick some really cool ideas, some really cool techniques. Press that like button, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe in case you're not already, because this channel, 75% of you people are watching this are not subscribers, so subscribe, ring that bell, and get notified about all the future episodes. Have fun experiment, and see you next week, same time. Bye-bye.